Will Ryzen 4000 beat Intel 10th gen in gaming? Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So a new rumor came out of the website WCCF Tech, and I will have a link in the description below so you can go check out the full article. But in the article, WCCF Tech theorizes that Zen 3's uplift will be around 20% max, which is really high. Now they got this because apparently there was a post by someone which was translated that stated that AMD Zen 3 samples were doing better than they had expected, but this in no way actually says that it is exactly 20%. So again, this is coming out of WCCF Tech. This is a rumor, so take it with a huge grain of salt, and I do suggest you read the whole article. Now, 20% is really impressive, but is it enough to beat Intel 10th Gen in gaming? Well, let's run a few scenarios and find out. Now, before we go into that, make sure to clap that like button if you want to see more videos like this, and I will be sure to keep pumping them out. Now with that out of the way, there are a few reasons as to why Intel is faster and it goes beyond just clock speed. So let's go ahead and talk about that before we go into the hypothetical scenarios in which AMD could actually beat or lose to Intel 10th gen in gaming. So the first major reason as to why Intel chips are a little bit better in gaming is that they have a true eight core architecture that doesn't have to go across infinity fabric, which adds latency. Note Intel's ring bus architecture has it all in one spot and so the latency is really really low. The second reason as to why Intel chips tend to be a little bit better at gaming is that games rely on processors with really low latency and Intel's cache design delivers just that. Now the third reason and this kind of ties into the cache design is that there's lower latency going from the cache to the DRAM in Intel chips as compared to AMD chips at least how it is now. So of course if the memory exceeds what you have in your cache and you need to go out to DRAM Intel's gonna do it just a little bit faster, and over time, that can add up. And then finally, everyone knows about this, but Intel chips simply are able to achieve higher clock speeds, and so of course, with higher clock speeds comes higher performance. And in games, that's a big deal. So all these factors I just went over contribute to around a 5% gain when you compare the 9900K to the 3900X, at least when you take hardware and box numbers, which of course I always take very seriously as the results that they get over at Hardware Unboxed are very, very accurate and very trustworthy. Now, you'd think that with only a 5% difference, which is almost unnoticeable, that AMD would easily be able to achieve a victory with its new processors. However, 10th gen does make that lead a little bit higher. Now, when we look at, say, the 10900K versus the 9900K, when you look at the thermal velocity boost, and this is probably something that if your water cooling will be achievable in games, it has around a 6% higher boost clock. So, of course, 6% higher, you can pretty much guarantee it'll hit 5 or 6% more performance in games. It'll be pretty linear. So then you take that 5% gain, and now it's more around 11% faster than AMD, and so AMD does have a little bit more work to do if they want to beat Intel and not match them. So now let's go over two different scenarios, one being the best case scenario where AMD actually wins by quite a bit if everything goes to plan, and one where AMD might actually still not be as fast as Intel's 10th gen chips, at least when it comes to gaming. So first, in a best case scenario, Zen 3 should have a true 8-core CCX, which gives them full access to that 32 megabytes of cache on chip, which is almost essentially a doubling of cache per core, which of course will lead to much higher IPC, as well as lower latency, hopefully, as you're not having to go from one quad-core cluster to another, crossing over that infinity fabric, and of course adding latency. This should be a big improvement. The next change that should happen is that there should be a lot lower latency from a cache redesign. Now, this isn't confirmed, but rumors have pointed towards a new cache design for the new Ryzen 4000 chips. And of course, with lower latency cache, that will lead to a better gaming chip overall. The third thing that should happen is that there should be less latency going from your cache to your DRAM, and that'll make a big difference when you're playing games. And then finally, there have been some rumors suggesting this, and there might be around a 100 megahertz jump in clock speed. Now, whether this comes in the form of a higher boost clock or just a higher clock when you're playing games or doing multi-core type of workloads, We'll just have to see, we don't know yet. 
but this is possible, and if that happens, that gives you about another 2% jump. Now, when you take all these improvements I just went over, and then you add in a best case scenario what could be a 20% IPC jump over the current third gen Ryzen chips, well, that gives you a total of 22% higher single core performance over the current third gen chips. Now, that's a really high amount, and while it is possible, it might not happen that way. But when we take a look at those numbers and you take 22% higher single core performance minus 11% of the difference, well, it could be actually up to 11% faster in say 4900X when you compare it to a 10900K or 10700K in gaming scenarios. And that's not to mention the fact that you could see somewhere of up to you know, with 50% more cores that gives you 50% more performance at around the same price. And then you add in the 11%, well, there you go, 61% higher multi-core performance for around the same price, or at least until Intel drops their prices. It would be really exciting to see AMD win on all fronts for once. It's been quite a long time. Now, even though this is possible and I'm looking forward to their fourth gen Ryzen chips, it's also possible that they could have a bunch of problems when making these chips, and it doesn't turn out quite how they'd like. So let's go over a second hypothetical scenario in which AMD might actually still lose to 10th gen. So in a worst case scenario, AMD could only get around a 10% jump in IPC, which is not a whole lot. And of course, this will be derived from what should be a move from a quad core CCX to a full eight core CCX, again, giving them full access to that 32 megabytes of cache. Again, they'll probably work on their cache latency in some way, shape or form, but let's say that it doesn't make a big difference and they still aren't able to get the latency going from cache to DRAM down quite enough, again, leading to that IPC jump of only 10%. And then on top of that, you could see no clock speed increase whatsoever. So we could be looking at a scenario where when we look at the Ryzen 4000 chips coming out, they could only get around a 10% higher uplift over the third gen chips in single core performance, leading to them leading to them still losing to Intel by basically an unnoticeable margin of 1%. It's not out of the realm of possibility, and honestly, it is fairly likely that this could happen. Now, in all reality, it's probably going to be somewhere in the middle. There have been other leaks that suggest around 15% IPC is more likely, and I think I believe that a little bit more than 20% or even 10% course anything is possible but in my opinion we'll probably get around 15 percent ipc and a two percent clock speed jump of 100 megahertz giving us around 17 percent higher or six percent faster in gaming than intel now of course we'll just have to see when they come out but that's all i have for this one and i'd like to know what you think do you think we'll be seeing 10 percent ipc 15 percent 20 percent even higher and do you think we'll be seeing any clock speed jump whatsoever? And if so, what do you think it'll be? I'm very interested to see what you have to say in the comments below, and I'll try and get back to as many of you as I can, and I'll see you in the next one. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.